because you're not an idiot, you know if some place is called the Sorrows, you're probably gonna have a bad time if you go. This video isn't for you. This is for the idiots who watched my last Do Not Visit video about Sty Guy and have now been sending me vacation photos. Welcome to Do Not Visit, a series where I talk about a place in a Game of Thrones, the A Song of Ice and Fire world, you definitely don't ever want to visit. Unless you want to die. And that's if you're lucky. This video's Do Not Fucking Visit, you fucking idiot, place is The Sorrows. Did you like that spooky lighting and music? Just for you. Located in Essos, The Sorrows is a stretch of the Rhoyne, one of the main rivers in Essos, that goes from south of Dagger Lake to beyond the ruins of Croyane. First off, and for most of you, I know this is going to be enough, the entire Sorrows is covered in dense fog. And if you've watched my other Do Not Visit videos, you know how I feel about fog. Scary shit happens in it. If you ask some people, the fog stinks of sorcery with restless spirits floating in it. And it is so dense, it has caused many pull boats, pirate ships, and regular ships to become lost in the mists, searching for a sun they cannot find until madness or hunger claims their lives. Even Tyrion, a skeptical man, acknowledges that there is something wrong with the sorrows and the fog it contains. That it feels like a bad place, rank with despair and death and unnatural fog. Not only that, but something foul seemed to grow in the waters and fester in the air. And I kind of just want to throw this out there really quick. If you're thinking you'll escape the sorrows by just visiting Dagger Lake, which is technically not the sorrows, but close enough, I have really bad news for you. While Dagger Lake is a beautiful lake formed from the rivers Roin and Coin, and definitely doesn't have any spooky fog, which is a major plus, it is also full of pirates due to no law being above the sorrows for a thousand years. Full of pirates lurking in secret strongholds and hidden caves waiting to do very bad things to you. Some of the pirates you could expect to meet if you decide to go to Dagger Lake because you're not brave enough to go into the Sorrows is Yerho the Unwashed, and I shiver because I imagine all the diseases that man has. Not only that, but this very special person's stench is so bad, it is enough to kill a man. If dying from smell doesn't sound that bad, there's also a lovely lady named Cora in this area, who is a female pirate whose crew is made of beautiful young maidens. And if you're a man and they catch you, they'll... Cut off your private parts. If you're a female, I guess you're okay. You notice that George brings up a lot of cutting off penises and balls. I, I, I don't want to draw any conclusions, but that guy doesn't have any kids. So avoid Dagger Lake, but really avoid the other side too. Even if you go past the Croyane. But let's talk about the Croyane, because that's like the epicenter of terrible things that happen in the Sorrows. Because, surprise, some really messed up shit happened in the Sorrows to make it super haunted. And there's a particular city that they think all of it began in. So to learn why the Sorrows is now haunted, super foggy, and should not be visited under any circumstances, let's jump back a thousand years before the books, when the Valerian Freehold was going strong and conquering those in Essos to satisfy their greed for resources and land, and enslaving people left and right. A series of conflicts occurred between the Roinar, a people that lived on the banks of the Rhoyne, and the colonies of the Valerian Freehold. These conflicts were called the Roynish Wars. And these wars lasted for over two and a half centuries, with the colonies of the Freehold wanting the Roynar and their resources, and the Roynar just wanting to be left alone. During the Second Spice War, the last of the Roynish Wars, with Philantus attacking them, a lot of terrible things happened, and a lot of the homes on the Roin were destroyed, and just brutal ways. Women and children were enslaved, and the warriors were massacred in terrible manners. What really set the Roinar off, though, was the three dragon lords from the Valerian Freehold joining up with Volantis to destroy the port Sarho, a beautiful port city of pink stone 
with saltwater gardens. They burned the city, sold the children into slavery, and salted the earth so they could never rebuild in this location. This destruction caused the Roinar to unite under Prince Garin of Croyane. Something not everyone was thrilled about, but something had to be done about Volantis and the Valerians. Gathering 250,000 men, Garin attempted to stop the Valerians, destroying every village, town, and outpost in his path. Every obstacle that met the man, he pushed through, managing to do the unthinkable, giving Valeria and Volantis pause. Leading his men, he conquered several cities and defeated three dragons with the help of Roinish water wizards. In doing so, Garen became known as Garen the Great, but Garen and his forces wouldn't have long to celebrate. In anger and fear, Volantis petitioned the Freehold for help, and the Roinar were no match for the 300 dragons that the Freehold sent in response. The dragons destroyed Garen's army, tens of thousands burning and drowning in the waters. So many of the Roinar were killed that the great harbor of Volantis was red as far as the eye could see. They also captured Garen and made him watch his people suffer while he could do nothing to help them. They then took Garen to sack another city, until finally they moved on to Croyane, the prince's own city. They hung him in a golden cage from the walls of his city, mocking him, as he watched the enslavement of the women and children of those that had died in his hopeless war. But they had made a mistake in not straight killing the man. Seeing the devastation around him, Garen called down a curse, asking Mother Roin to avenge her fallen children. That night, the Roin flooded out of season, and with a greater force than ever known, drowning the invaders. A thick fog fell, and the Valerian conquerors began to die of grayscale. Some say the spirits of those that died remain under the waters with their flesh turning as stony as their hearts, forced to dwell there for the terrible things they did to the Roinar, and that their cold breath rises from the murk to make the fogs that infest the ruined city in the sorrows. The whispering dead hate the warm and are always looking for more damned souls to join them. Some even say that Garen's curse caused the doom of Valeria much later. Not only that, but some believe that Garen's spirit still wanders the sorrows, ruling the mists of the sorrows as the Shrouded Lord, or as he's sometimes called, the Prince of Sorrows, or Grey Grace, and that he spreads grayscale through his grey kiss. Though some claim it isn't Garen risen from his watery grave, but a number of people that get replaced every time one dies. However, there is another tale that states the Shrouded Lord was a statue first, and a grey woman from the fog kissed it to life, with lips as cold as ice. I guess the good news is the Shrouded Lord doesn't give his kiss lightly, and if you can make him laugh, he'll give you a pretty sick reward. In present day, the once beautiful city is now full of sunken temples and headless statues, upended trees, and shattered spires, and marble stairs. And scariest of all, that the sorrows covered in the deep fog are where the stone men afflicted with grayscale roam. And why would you ever visit some place where the stone men are known to roam? Unless you have a death wish. The stone men are in the late stages of grayscale, lumbering and witless. But if the disease has gone far enough, they have become crazy and may attack you. As any physical contact with them runs the risk of getting grayscale, a disease that causes your flesh to become stiff and dead and crack and flake off, avoiding them is a good idea. Okay, so even if stone men, scary fog, and a man that kisses people without permission doesn't frighten you, there's two other things that might make you not want to visit. One, it's really hard to get to the sorrows. And two, once you're in the sorrows, it's really hard to navigate. The sunken architecture and statues are a threat to any boats, so you could end up sinking. Don't get any of the water in your mouth because you also might get grayscale. And again, the fog has caused many travelers to become lost, eventually succumbing to madness, grayscale, stone men, or hunger. So that also doesn't sound like a good time, at least not to me. I try not to be judgmental of other people's extracurricular activities. Even if you get there, make sure to bring enough food. Although the Triarchs of Volantis send a galley upriver with provisions three times a year, often they bring more mouths than food. And again, a wise sane man would not eat or drink the river or anything in it. Because again, 
some believe drinking the water could inflict you with grayscale, which is a bad time for everyone involved. But you want to know what? You're your own person. So if you really, really want to go to the sorrows and your heart is just set on it, here's one place I really think you should visit and you're going to absolutely love. So in the sorrows in Croain, there is a place called Palace of Sorrow. Next to that, you're gonna see a bridge. This is the Bridge of Dream that rises 40 feet above the river and extends from the Palace of Sorrow to the Roin's western bank. You'll probably notice a row of beacon lamps. You know you're in the right place if you see those. Though the wooden bridge has rotted through and many of its place arches have collapsed due to the weight of the gray moss and thin black vines, the bridge is completely safe to walk on. Just go right up there. You may also hear some wailing as you get close by, but that's just the wind. On the bridge, you're gonna see some really cool people that may seem a little slow and dumb and slightly discolored. Ignore that, they are amazing. But in order to be really respectful of their culture, you need to go right up to them and just give them a huge hug and then kiss them on either cheek and then open kiss their mouth. So thanks for watching another Do Not Visit. I give this place 10 out of 10 nopes, but what about you? How many nopes or is this your next vacation spot? Hey, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and... Do one nice thing today for one person. Maybe say something nice, help someone out, just, just one, one thing. And then let me know in the comment section what